If you're a company looking to make a Bluetooth speaker these days, you can pretty much go shopping in China, pull something off a shelf, slap your badge on it, and call it your own. That kind of process would not work for the people at Ultimate Ears, quite the opposite. In this unassuming business park building behind me is actually a state-of-the-art research and development facility where Ultimate Ears designs, tests, designs, and tests again to bring us award-winning Bluetooth mobile speakers like the Boom, the Mega Boom, and now this, the Roll. Let's go check out how they do it. Those computers and oscilloscopes you see are actually displaying data being taken inside this massive room with thick pneumatic security doors. Stepping inside is kind of like stepping inside some kind of spacecraft. It doesn't have tons of buttons and lights, but it does have tons of acoustic insulation, plus this foreboding antenna measuring every single radio wave coming from the test subject. The table you see is on a turntable so that the subject can be measured from every direction. It's important to know if the device you're building complies with FCC standards or not, so UE uses this room to make sure all its gear meets or often exceeds federal standards. Most of UE's competition has to outsource this kind of work to a third party, and that can add weeks or even months to development. We should also note that UE uses this room to help ensure its speakers can reject outside interference so its speakers will never play that cell phone clicking sound you sometimes hear right before your phone rings. One of the most interesting things about UE's facilities are its stress test rooms. UE builds its speakers as resilient. Take them anywhere, they can endure anything. And this is why. UE beats on these speakers mercilessly and in multiple ways. They shock them, toss them in a box with steel plates and drop them over and over and over. Dunk them in up to three feet of water for up to 30 minutes at a time, while playing music, mind you. They yank on them, bake them in sunlight as intense as the sun in Miami, and play them at distortion levels for hours at a time, all to make sure their speakers live up to their reputation. You even test the strength of its USB cables, and I'm here to tell you they are indeed some of the strongest I've used. One of the things that makes UE speakers unique is their long wireless range. UE uses this tool to measure its Bluetooth chip's power to transmit and receive wireless signals. They change the positioning and the orientation of the chip in order to maximize its effectiveness. This allows UE to achieve Bluetooth ranges up to about 100 feet with line of sight, and that is at the very top of the industry right now. Perhaps the most mesmerizing part of UE's facility, though, is its anechoic chamber. If that radio measurement room is like stepping into some kind of spacecraft, entering the anechoic chamber is like traveling to another dimension. You don't realize what real silence is like until you're in a place where echoes and reverb don't exist. To make this room, UE built an independent foundation and extremely thick walls all independent of the building it sits in. All six surfaces inside the room are covered in four foot deep sound abating baffle material, and that includes the floor, which is suspended on the foundation by huge springs. And since the floor is basically four feet of spiky foam, a suspended false floor is installed so that you can walk around inside. UE uses this room to measure the sound output of anything they want, from their power supplies to speakers and even headphones. Speakers are placed on this turntable platform so that a speaker can be measured from any angle. This is part of how Ultimate Ears is able to verify that its roll speaker sounds the same from any direction. Headphones are measured using this mannequin, which has microphones strategically placed inside. And honestly, this is just scratching the surface of UE's extensive facility, but it helps to give you an idea of just how much goes into making something as seemingly simple as a Bluetooth speaker. Turns out, it isn't so simple after all.